Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chocolate Chip Cookie Yoga. Yes. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> Let's start in mountain pose, everybody. <laughs> just take your time. Just come to a standing position. I'd like to begin our practice here. And we'll just continue this arrival by focusing on breath. So feel free to close your eyes completely or just soften your eyes. You might just take a soft gaze downward or forward as you just tune into your breath. First, just notice that you are breathing. Just pay attention to your next inhale and the exhale that follows. And even with that short one round of breath, you're already practicing yoga. Just the simple idea of tuning in paying closer attention to your own being. So let's continue the practice. Another breath in and a breath out. And just continue with this steady flow of breath. Noticing how it feels when you breathe. Paying attention to the sound. Even add movement if it feels good. Just a way of checking in with how you're feeling in your body, even assessing what you might need for your physical body. Good. Breathing in and out. the feeling of the breath and the sound of the breath. And perhaps on your next inhale, just feel how breath rises upward to fill your lungs. So it might be a nice, full, expansive breath in. And as you exhale, as you're able, <clears throat> draw your belly button in towards your spine, a little pulling sensation right at the belly button. We call that the abdominal lock, just a nice light contraction of the abdominal muscles, a way of focusing on your center. Again, breathing in, feeling the breath rising to fill your lungs, and the exhale to lightly contract the abdominal muscles, the abdominal lock. And that sensation helps you feel strong in your body and to feel supported in your own body, helps you to move and to be still. Our practice today is going to focus on back bends or heart openers. So perhaps your intention for your practice today is it might be something centered around your heart, opening up to something that you're needing, desiring, or even opening up yourself to give, to offer, to share. Let's take three more breaths. And then ready to move with breath, moving at your own pace. Inhale, extend your arms out and up. A nice stretch. Take your time, reaching towards the sky. And exhale, we'll fold forward. So a good hinge from your hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And just take your time, fold forward. Maybe your fingers touch your toes or the ground, or maybe your hands land at your shins. Then inhale, slide your hands up, the legs perhaps to your knees to rise up halfway. This is just half forward fold. Then exhale, either stay here or slowly fold back down. You can just pause at any point or even go all the way down. If you do go all the way down, just noticing that heaviness in the body, letting gravity draw you downward and just noticing the sensations in your body here. The nice curvature of the spine. You might feel a stretch in the backs of your legs. And since we are focusing on heart openers or back bends, this is a counter pose, an opposite position. Forward folds. We'll be doing plenty of forward folds as well. Let's inhale, slide the hands back up to the shins or knees, holding here to a flat back. Sometimes I call it monkey pose. 
And we'll continue standing first, shift your weight into your heels, bend your knees, lower your hips like you're sitting down, start lifting the upper body, extend your arms out and up, then inhale, reach for the sky. And exhale, you can bring your palms together and down to your heart, or you can bring your arms down to your side, either one. Just pause, take a breath. That's our half salute to the sun. We'll just repeat that. Again, just going at your own pace, moving when you're ready. Inhale, reaching into the air. And exhale, leading with your heart, fold forward. Again, soft knees, good control as you make your way down, partially or all the way. Inhale, rise up halfway to feel the lengthening of the spine for the top of your head lead you forward. The exhale, stay here or slide back down, pausing at any point, or return to that full forward fold. Once again, shifting weight into your heels, bend your knees like and lower your hips like you're sitting. Lift the upper body, extend arms out, then up as you inhale, reaching high, extended mountain pose. Then exhale, bring your palms together down to your heart, or again, arms down to your side. Another pause here. We'll just continue to move with breath, just adding on to the sequence, yeah. Just keep checking in with how you're feeling. Don't forget, modify any poses, rest whenever you need to. Here we go, inhale, reaching into the air. Exhale, fold forward. Always okay to bend your knees as much as you need to as you guide your way down. That might even help you to touch your toes. Then inhale, rise up halfway. Again, the top of your head leads you forward. The exhale, slide back down. Bend the knees more so you can place your hands on your mat out in front of your feet at the top of the mat. And step your feet back to the back end of your mat. And just draw a straight line with the body. You'll be in plank pose. Nice lengthening through the body. So this is important too. We'll be doing forward folds, back bends, but we also want to lengthen the spine. Take a breath in. Exhale, bend your knees a little. Send your hips into the air. This should guide you into downward facing dog. Your heart, your head kind of sink between the arms. You might need to adjust your feet, maybe even your hands on your mat. I'd even suggest keeping the knees soft. That way the hips continue to lift up hands root into the earth. This too will help to lengthen through the torso and the spine. Feel free just to hold here and be here or rest if you need to. You can always come down to your knees. Or if you're still in down dog, add some movement. Maybe you want to pedal the feet, getting a stretch through your calves and your toes, like you're walking or pedaling a bicycle. Knees will bend, hips will shift side to side. Good. From here, take a nice full breath in, filling up your lungs. Exhale, connecting to your core center. Bend your knees, walk, step, or hop. Both feet return to the top of your mat. You can take your time with that transition. Inhale, rise up halfway, our monkey pose, lengthen torso. Exhale, fold. Same weight shift into the heels, bend your knees. We'll inhale, reverse the swan dive. Coming all the way back up to standing, reach high. This exhale, take chair pose, sitting back and down into the seat. You can stay up high, we can sink down a little lower. Wherever you are, we are going to change our arm posture. Just bend your elbows. We're going to open the heart here. Just pull the arms back so you can kind of feel this opening across the chest. Even feel an engagement in your upper back as you squeeze those muscles together. Okay, we're going to Inhale, stand up tall again, reach up, even look up. This creates a minor back bend by looking up and exhale, swan dive forward, back down towards toes. Take your time. Inhale, rise up halfway to feel the fully extended spine. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, hands to the earth, hop or step back into plank pose. Pause here, feel the length and strength in your own body, lengthening through torso. The first time from here, we moved, we took a shortcut to down dog. You can do the same thing. Or with the exhale, bend your elbows, squeeze them in towards your ribs, and come down, finishing the push-up. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to a low cobra, or upward facing dog, or something in between. Just find your first back bend here. And exhale, tuck your toes under, send your hips into the sky. Downward facing dog. Don't forget to adjust your feet and hands as you need to. Here's our lunge. Inhale, let's extend the right leg up behind you. Reach long. Exhale, step right foot to the top of the mat, or just landing behind the right hand is good. Turn your left heel to the floor. Put some weight back there so you'll shift your body weight back into that foot. So your hands are light, so you can reach forward, then rise up, reach up, 
Let's hold here for a moment. Nice extension of the arms, a little bit more of a lunge down below. We also want lengthening through the sides of the body. Okay, that's also going to make space as we create back bends. Inhale here. Exhale, hinge and fold. Bring your hands back down to the earth. Slide your right foot back to meet the other. You'll be in plank pose. Finishing the push-up if you'd like, or take a shortcut to down dog, or modify. Yeah, you can be, bring your knees to the floor first, then your chest if you're going through that part of the vinyasa. A really low back bend is appropriate here, and then downward facing dog. Whatever movements you choose will always meet in down dog. Other side, inhale, extend left leg up and back, nice strong straight line. Exhale, we're stepping foot to the top of the mat. Take your time to get there. Right heel to the earth, shifting the weight back, plant the heel. Light hands rising up, and again, we'll hold. Good effort of reaching up, lunging low. Okay, it's like standing in extended mountain pose or anything with our arms in the air. Energy through the hands and fingers, lengthening through the sides of the body. Inhale, exhale, hinge and fold, plant the hands. Slide the left foot back, there's plank. Finishing the sequence as you'd like. Shortcut's fine or any variation of movements to get you to down dog. You can always skip things or even add things. Downward facing dog. When you get to down dog, just always think of lengthening through the torso as much as you can. Let's go right into our next lunge sequence. Inhale, re-extend right leg up behind you. Let's open the hip here. Bend your right knee, bring your heel down towards your backside, yes. A little lift of the knee, creates a little bit of a twist in the torso and that hip opener. Breathe in. On the exhale, we'll unwind from that rotation. Step right foot to the top of the mat. Went back to a warrior one. Plant that left heel, find that balance. Light hands rise up. Exhale, opening to your left. Arms come down to parallel, you'll be in warrior two. Adjusting the feet so you have a strong foundation below you. Yes, there you go. And then side angle pose, Let's reach out to angle the upper half of the body. We'll rotate the arms, bring your right arm down. You can brace it against the inner right leg while left hand reaches up initially. You could reach down lower to touch the ground, but you don't have to touch the ground. With this left hand, reach it over your head reaching through the fingertips towards this front wall if you're able. If you need to bend that elbow, that's perfectly fine too. Yes, breathe in. Exhale, we'll turn and fold. Bring your hands back down to the earth. Step back, plank pose. Finishing your sequence as you'd like. Each time you get here, it might be different each time, and that's fine. Once in down dog. We'll inhale, extend left leg into the air. Let's create that hip opener, bend the knee, heel down towards backside, a little lift of the knee. It doesn't have to lift very high. You'll feel the body, upper body kind of turn or twist as the hip opens. Breathe in, and the exhale to unwind, step through. Left foot to the top of the mat, right heel to the earth. Find your center, rising when you're ready. Warrior one, exhale opening to the right side of the room. Arms come down to parallel, adjusting your feet. Good energy in the body for your warrior two position. There it is. Side angle pose. Let's follow the left arm forward to angle the upper half of the body and then rotate the arms reaching down towards the six on a clock, right hand reaching up towards the 12. Stay up high if you want to or go down low towards the floor only as it feels right to you. Let's take this right hand reaching overhead reaching through your fingertips towards this front wall. Again, we're just lengthening through the side of the body, making more space. We'll breathe in, and our exhale to turn and fold. Hands to the earth, left foot back, plank, finishing your sequence. Meeting in downward facing dog. Feel the lengthening of the torso. Let's do a back bend on the floor. So you're gonna bend your knees, so come down to a kneeling position. Sit back briefly in hero. Then off to the side so you can swing the legs around to the front. <clears throat> then go ahead and roll down onto your back. You can draw your knees into chest. A little hugging sensation. 
by hugging the knees in, you're also creating another forward fold. Add movement here as it feels good. For me, it's a nice massage for my back and my hips. Since your feet are free, you might even just circle the feet, just loosening up the ankle joints. So we're moving from our forward fold into a back bend. So it'll be a bridge. So we'll plant the feet into the ground, keeping the knees bent, making sure feet feel solid, solid on the ground. Take a nice full breath in, filling up your lungs. You can exhale through the mouth if you'd like. And then using that sensation to lift your hips off the ground. Now you could just lift a little bit if you happen to have a prop like a bolster or a block. You could just sit on the block just for a more modified position. Or just continue lifting the hips a little higher. You'll feel more sensation in the body. And let's get a little bit more of that back bend feel, that more sensation of the chest opening. So you might rock your upper body left and right several times, getting your shoulders underneath you. And to support the upper body, bend your elbows so your arms are at 90 degrees. That way you can press the elbows and triceps down into the floor to help you lift the upper body or just sustain the posture. So it just kind of creates this nice heart opening position. Along with the heart opening, also notice the other sensations in the body and take two more breaths. After those two breaths, just start to soften a little bit. We'll wiggle the feet forward, bend, and extend your arms straight up into the air. That should get the shoulders out from underneath you. That way you have space in your back body so you can roll back down to the ground. Once you've landed, extend your arms behind you, legs out front. So a forward fold, back bend, now lengthen. Go ahead and draw knees into chest once again. You can rock your way up to seated or roll to one side and press yourself up to seated, whatever feels best for you. Come to seated so we can come to boat pose. I usually start here with knees bent, heels on the ground, holding on to the legs to first extend the spine, lean back, finding that spot where I have the appropriate tension I want on my abs here. And I can stay just like this. This is fine. I feel it. You can certainly find a little bit more balance to lift the feet. You can straighten the legs a little or a lot. Do energize the feet, either flex the feet or point your toes, either one. <clears throat> Breathing, a nice inhale to fill up the lungs and heart space. You can even <sighs> exhale through the mouth so you can feel the air leave your belly so you can really engage here. So a nice strong sensation. Let's move, inhale. Exhale, cross legs, hands in front of the cross legs, getting the legs behind you or hands to the side, uncross the legs, just getting back into plank pose. From here, just take a shortcut to down dog, just bend your knees a little, send your hips into the air. We're gonna go back to standing, so a nice full breath in, exhale, bend knees, hop, step or walk, both feet to the top of the mat, here again, once again, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Crown leads forward. That's the extended spine. Exhale, fold. Even a, a little pause down here, just for that forward fold sensation. Then the weight shift into the heels. Bend your knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come all the way up. Reach into the air. And exhale, just arms down to your side. All right, just a little pause here, a little check in. Notice how you feel. Get a sip of water a little movement of the body before we continue our flow. And when you're ready, inhale, reaching high. Exhale, take chair pose again, and moving into that cactus arms or goalpost arms. Same thing, pull the arms back so you can feel this opening across the chest. And do you notice the sensation? Back muscles engaging. You might even feel it in your shoulders. Same thing, we're gonna inhale, stand up, reach up, even tip your gaze upward for a standing back bend. Exhale, swan dive. Monkey pose, that's our spinal extension. Inhale, exhale, fold, bend your knees, hands to the earth, hop, step or walk the feet back, 
plank pose. Come down if you want to, Chaturanga Dandasana. You can still skip this or modify this flow. Chaturanga to an up dog or a cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Once in down dog. Inhale, extend right leg up behind you. A quick bend and twist, bending of the knee, a little twist of the spine for the hip opener. On the next exhale, unwind and step through. Right foot to the top of the mat. Left heel roots into the earth behind you. Find your center and balance, then rise up. Exhale, opening warrior two. Okay, hold here for a moment. First, just situate your feet so you feel solid. Reverse the warrior. Right palm turns up, reach up into the air. It could be straight up. It might even be slightly forward. Or if it feels okay, maybe slightly behind you. It creates a little bit more of that side bend, making more space through the right side body. Good extension through the arm. Then a big windmill or cartwheel out of the pose, around and down to the floor in front. A step back into plank pose. Let's pause for a moment, just so you can start to feel the realignment of the spine. And a shortcut to down dog, soft knees, hips to sky. Inhale, extend left leg into the air. Quick bend and twist. Unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat, right heel to the earth. Finding your center, rising when you're ready. Inhale. Exhale, opening to warrior two. Situating yourself, arriving in the posture. And then our reversed warrior pose. Left hand reaching into the air. It's okay if you're reaching kind of out in front of you. It could be straight up towards the 12 on the clock. Or maybe slightly behind you. Just as long as you have this good extended arm, lengthening space creation through the side body. Big windmill all the way around and down to the floor in front. Back to our plank pose. Hold. Another shortcut's fine or go through a full vinyasa. Hold for a moment just to experience the lengthening of the torso. And ready for our next formal back bend. Let's bring the knees to the floor. Sit back briefly in hero, just get off the hands. We're gonna move into camel pose or a variation of camel. So camel pose is you're like you're creating the hump of the camel. So we're gonna rise up onto the knees. You can go ahead and follow me. Rise up onto your knees. I'm gonna face this way for a moment. <clears throat> you can keep the feet flat or you can tuck your toes, either one, okay? Whatever feels okay on your feet and toes. Now, once you're up, you want to activate through the hips. You want to push pelvis forward to really activate here so you feel strong. Go ahead and follow me. Hips over your knees, okay? And with your hands, you can place your palms, your flat hands here, or thumbs. I use my fists right below the belt line. Two actions here. You're going to push down and forward. Pushing down makes space across the belt line. Pushing forward keeps the hips over the knees. So together we'll inhale, push down, but feel the torso lift tall. As you exhale, kind of push forward and then lean back a little bit. Even if you're just kind of tipping your eyes up or your chin up a little bit. And that's as far as we're gonna take this. Okay? You probably can go a little further and you may, but not too deep. This is about as far as we'll take it this first time. So you can really feel the support of the hands on pushing down, forward down, forward, just consistently over and over to keep creating that space so I don't feel like I'm going to collapse or pinch my low back. Meanwhile, chest and heart feel like it's lifting. Upward. Inhale. As you exhale, lower your chin, look forward, soften the pose, start to sit back, hands out front, child's pose. You can take your knees a little wider here just to make a little bit more space to sit back. You don't have to get the hips to the heels, maybe just down a little bit, but mainly just to get some extension through the spine, even a curvature in the spine. So another counter pose. We just did a back bend, now a forward fold. If you need more movement here, more stretching, just really extend the arms out front, hips sending them back to the back edge of your mat or heels. Even a side stretch, you can take your hands and arms over to one side of your mat if they move to the right, you'll feel a stretch through the left side. And of course, the other side as needed. A 
Let's take three more breaths. After the third breath, just take your time, come back up to hands and knees. If the knees went wide, you wanna bring them in a little bit so they're directly underneath the hips. Just a little tabletop posture. Tap your right foot. We're gonna swing that right foot off to the right side, making a kickstand for balance. Extend the left leg back, but keep the toes on the floor. Then open your body towards the windows, left hand reaching into the air. So it's side plank. But we've got that right knee onto the, on the floor for balance. We've got that kickstand. Let's see if we can create this into a back bend too. First, extend your left arm overhead, reaching towards this front wall. You might need to put a little bit more weight and pressure in your right hand so you can actually lift your left foot up off the floor. Flex the foot and then lift it, yeah. Get the extension first, then as you're able, you'll bend your left knee, bring your heel towards backside. And if you can, left hand reaching towards that foot. It's okay if you don't reach the foot, just reach for the air. Or maybe you can touch your heel. If you can, grab hold of the foot or ankle. Okay, more instructions. You're pushing your pelvis and belly forward towards the window. Your foot, the back of your head, is going towards the hallway towards the cookies. <laughs> Creating a back bend. Slowly, carefully release, re-extend the leg, re-extend the arm, turn, bring hand and knee to the ground. Right foot comes back in, cat and cow. Inhale to cow, that's the back bend. But your body's gonna appreciate cat, rounding the spine here. So that you just came out of a back bend. Okay, keep flowing, keep moving through that. It might feel good, I know it feels good for me to, to kind of hold that oof, that cat pose. And that's a nice stretch. But again, anything that feels good to you, yes, there you go. <clears throat> Whatever feels natural to you, you might kind of sit back and swing the hip side to side. Whatever feels good. Circles, even get off the hands. You can even come down to your elbows and still kind of do this flow here. Different sensations, but you can still get that curvature in the spine. Two more breaths. Take your time, but just make your way back up. Two hands and knees so we can do the other side. We'll tap the left foot, swing that left foot off to the left side. Extend the right leg back behind you, keep toes on the floor for a little anchoring, and then open your body to the right side of the room, right hand reading into, uh, reaching into the air. Good extensions, activate the body. Just like in that camel pose, I had you activate your hips, push them forward, yes, that's it. Okay, reach right hand overhead, lengthening, get some more pressure into that left hand. If you need to rest, you certainly come out of this pose. Flex right foot so we can easily lift off the floor as you're able. There's the extension, then we create a back bend. Bend the right knee, right hand reaching behind you, even if you're just grabbing the air. Okay, that's it, good. Or touching the heel, or grabbing the ankle, or a foot, or a toe. Belt buckle, pushing forward. Your belly is going the same direction while you're the back of your head, and maybe your foot's going out the window behind you. Slowly and carefully release, re-extend the leg and the arm. Turn, right hand to the floor, right knee to the ground. Kickstand comes back in, cat, cow. Same thing, unless you need to get off your hands, you can come down to a child's pose or down to your elbows and continue the flow. If, you need, your, if your wrists need a little break, I mean, might need that break. And of course, adding any other movement that might feel good, yes. Your back, your hips, your spine. Three more breaths. Returning to a neutral tabletop posture. And then to down dogs, so you might tuck your toes. You might even step your hands forward a little bit. 
and lift the knees, send your hips into the air, head and chest sink between the arms. Keep knees soft, hips lift higher, hands root a little bit more strongly into the earth. Remember, you're creating length, space. Here we go, pick up right foot, extend the right leg back behind you, another bend and twist open. Unwind, step through, back to a warrior one. Left heel to the earth behind you, find center, take your time, rise up when you're ready. Warrior one, exhale, opening warrior two. Right away, side angle, reach out, rotate the arms, continue to follow the left arm overhead, making more space through the left side body. Once you're here, breathe in. Exhale, turn, fold, hands to the floor, step back into plank pose. Listen carefully, bring your knees to the floor, just your knees, and finish the push-up if you come down to your belly. Stay right here. You might want to widen or uh, uh, spread out the fingers a little bit on the ground. Grip the mat with your fingertips and try to pull yourself forward like you're trying to drag yourself forward to the top of the mat. Meanwhile, lengthen your legs, point your toes, and try to reach to the back edge of your mat. So you're trying to pull forward, but reach to the back edge at the same time. We're making space in the back. It's going to barely lift the chest off the floor. This is our low cobra or locust pose. Okay. And if you can, you know, roll the shoulders kind of away from the floor, but squeeze shoulder blades together. Ah, activate the upper back. And because of this low back bend position, it kind of affects the entire back, upper, middle, and lower. Inhale, exhale, soften. And push back to hands and knees. Tuck toes, lift knees and hips, downward facing dog. So that was just a back bend. So again, take advantage of the down dog, lengthen through the torso. Other side, inhale, extend left leg into the air. Bend and twist, go at your own pace. Unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat. Right heel to the earth, find center, rise when you're ready. Exhale, open, warrior two. Side angle, reach out, rotate the arms. Continue to follow the right hand overhead, reach, extend, lengthen through right side body. Breathe in, exhale, turn, fold, hands to the floor, step back, plank pose. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Bring knees to the floor and finish the chest, lowering down to the earth. Spread out your fingers. They're probably underneath the shoulders, which is fine. Grip the mat, try to pull yourself forward. Activate the legs and feet, point your toes, reach to the back edge of the mat. Barely lift the chest. Wrap your spine, you're lifting the shoulders, squeeze shoulder blades together to activate the back. You can stay just like this, or if you're able, maybe you can lift your hands off the floor, or even lift your feet off the floor. Okay, these are optional right here. Breathe in. Exhale, soften. This is how we're gonna soften. Bring your hands underneath you like this. You can just rest your head or cheek on your hands. If you can, turn your feet out, okay? This is crocodile pose. And turning the feet out, even if they don't go all the way out, that's fine. But just, it's an outer spiral in the legs and hips. And, and for some, it might be a nice release in the low back. But if, it, if that's not what you're experiencing, change your leg and foot position. So yes, a yoga pose, crocodile pose. Two more breaths. Let's get our legs and feet back to a, that centered position, hands underneath shoulders. And again, just pushing back to hands and knees. Let's get the knees directly underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. Let's inhale to cow pose. That's the back bend here. Exhale into cat pose. 
Hold cat. Keep this rounded sensation. Just keep breathing, but see if you can keep this rounded sensation. Kind of lean over to your right hand and right knee. So you can extend your left leg back behind you, but keep the toes on the floor. Now shift your weight back over into your left hand. So you can extend your right hand forward. Reach. Okay. If you can, pick up the left foot. So we have this spinal balance thing that's going on here. Now your spine is nicely lengthened. If you're able, let's bend the left knee. Let's bring this right hand around to the back. Touch the heel or grab the air, or if you can, grab your foot or ankle. And if you're able from here, if you do have a hold of it, lift the foot up towards the ceiling. Tip your gaze forward past the front edge of your mat, or even look forward towards the front of the room. This is tiger pose. It's another form of a back bend here. We're gonna soften, release, re-extend the arm and leg, hand and knee to the floor. Let's get off the hand, sit back into child's pose. Or any other posture, you could just be hero pose here, good. Or even that crocodile pose if you wanna come all the way down, nice. Just some relief. So many variations of heart openers, back bends in the yoga practice. And again, using these experiences as a way to make space, open your heart, as a way to receive what you're asking for, or if you have something to share or give, your heart is now open. Two more breaths. And take your time, no rush. Come back to hands and knees. We'll do our spinal balance and tiger pose on the other side. We'll start with cow pose. That's the back bend. Inhale. Exhale, round it out into cat. Hold cat. So you can get that nice rounded sensation out of the back bend. Let's lean into the left hand and left knee. So you can extend the right leg back behind you. Keep the toes on the floor. Let's put weight back into the right hand. So you can extend the left arm forward. You can stay just like this, or if you're able, pick up the right foot. Spine is straight, nice extended arms. We're making space ready for your back bend if you choose to take it. Bend the right knee, reach back with left hand, even if you're just reaching for the air, or grab a toe, or the ankle, touch the heel. If you've got a hold, lift the foot directly up towards the ceiling. It creates this more significant back bend. Even look forward. Soften, release, extend, hand and knee to the floor. Two breaths, cat and cow. And then sit back into hero pose. Just get off the hands. Okay. Yeah, yeah, give the massage there too. Okay. <clears throat> Let me demonstrate this next piece. <clears throat> We're gonna come back down to our bellies <clears throat> and move into half bow. It's very similar to what we've already been doing, but here's our setup. Ahead, you spread out your fingers, pull like you're just trying to, like you're dragging yourself forward. Active feet, point your toes, reach. So you're moving in opposite direction so we can make as much space as we can, especially in that low back. I'm gonna extend my left hand forward. I make a little table with my fingers here for a little support. Lifting my right leg and extending it behind. I just wanna keep the thigh on the floor, but bend the knee. Oops, I'm doing the wrong, wrong leg here. Bend this left knee, here we go. And reach back, touching the heel or grabbing the ankle. I wanna extend my right arm forward, that's what I wanna do here. And as you're able, lifting, I'm lifting the thigh a little bit off the floor here. You can stay just like this. We're lifting that back foot. Hand, you don't have to lift the head like that, too much of a strain on the neck. Keep head neutral. 
half bow. We'll do both sides, of course. Okay. Alternative, if you don't want to be on your belly, <clears throat> just go back to tiger pose. Okay. It's an opposite limb, okay? You can do that pose again. All right, back out to plank pose, or hands and knees, really. And then just finish your push-up, just come down to your belly. Put your flat on your belly here. We're doing the hands and knees version for another tiger pose, but I'll take you through for half bow. Long legs, point your toes. Let's extend the left arm forward, actually both hands forward. Both hands forward. We'll bend left knee, heel towards backside, take left hand, reach back. Either just touch the heel, grab the air. This could be the end of the pose. Or if you can, grab a hold of the foot or ankle. And just a little lift of the chest. Keep your head neutral, meaning keep the head down. If you're able, there's some other things you can do here. Pick up the foot, left foot, lifting the thigh off the floor. Pick up the right foot off the floor. Even extend your right arm forward. Carefully release. Come back to your crocodile pose or any other posture that might feel better for you. Yes, there you go. I like that twist that someone's doing back there. You can take one leg, take it behind you and just kind of twist through the spine, yeah. If you feel a little rotation. Half bow pose, two more breaths. Okay, ready for the other side. Long legs pointed toes behind you. Reach through your toes, both hands out front, both arms extending. Bend right knee. Bring right hand behind, just reach for the air, touch the heel or grab the ankle. Stay here or add on. Lifting the right foot, lifting left foot, lifting left arm. You can do one or all of those things. Keep head neutral. Breathe in, exhale, careful release. Crocodile or any other pose. Just for a couple breaths, then I'll have you move into child's pose. So whenever you're ready, from your crocodile, just push back and sit back into a child's pose. And same thing here. So we've just went through a significant back bend or a series of back bends there. So let's round out the spine, lengthen the spine in our child's pose. If you need more of those side bends, just reach to one side, then the other. Find the length, find the space that you need. This nice counter pose. We'll take five more breaths. After your fifth breath, take your time. Come back slowly to hands and knees, and then eventually downward facing dog. Once in down dog, remember to keep the knees well bent as hips continue to lift up and back towards that back wall, hands root into the earth, making more length and space along the spine. Warrior lunge sequence. Inhale, extend right leg up, bend and twist. Unwind, step through, warrior one, set up. Left heel to the earth, rise when you're ready, inhale. Exhale, opening warrior two. Let's reverse the warrior this time. Right hand reaching up. Yes, slight side bend there if that feels good. Big windmill all the way around and down to the floor. 
Step back, plank pose. Pause. Bring knees to the floor. Finish the push-up. Bring chest and belly to the floor. We're going to go through those bow poses again. Now, you're welcome to do half bow again or a tiger pose. Or if you're able, a full bow pose. If you do one bow just or you know half bow, just choose one side. Otherwise, we're bending both knees. Reaching back, both hands, fine ankles. You might even flex the feet there. Kind of creates a little hook. Lifting the feet up, thighs lift, chest lifts off the floor. Again, keeping head neutral. Full bow or do half. Inhale, exhale slowly, come down, release, hands to the floor, push back child's pose. Just a full breath or two here. Then downward facing dog. Continuing the flow, but once in down dog, don't forget, find the extended spine. Inhale, extend left leg into the air, bend and twist. Unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat, warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Hold that for a few seconds. Nice relief for the side body, it helps the spine as well. The low back, big cartwheel around and down to the floor. Plank pose, hold. Knees to the floor, chest to the ground. Same thing, either tiger pose on the other side or half bow on the other side or a full bow again. Taking four or five breaths in the pose. Inhale, exhale for the slow and careful release. Child's pose. Very good. I like child's pose not only as a counter position to the back bend and heart opener, but sometimes we don't always want to feel that exposed <laughs> in a heart opening condition like a back bend. So it's perfectly fine and healthy, right? To sometimes we have to go back inside, take care of ourselves. And so I think child's pose really kind of symbolizes that it's okay to kind of move back in, do your own self healing and protection. You don't always have to feel like you have to ah, be open and vulnerable all the time. Three more breaths. After your third breath, slowly rise to hero just briefly. So you'll sit off to the side, swing the legs around to the front, sit in the center of your mat. Go ahead and roll down onto your back. Go ahead and draw knees into chest, creating another forward fold. Add some movement to massage the back, your hips, movement in the feet, even your wrists and fingers here too. Let's do a windshield wiper twist because that might help the spine a little bit, the low back. So set your feet down. And once they're down, take them wide, right out to the edges of your mat or close to the edges of the mat. Then send both knees over to the left side. It's going to really affect the right side of your body, that hip, the low back, maybe even that right knee. So be mindful of how that right knee feels because it's kind of 
maybe getting a little torqued inward. So mindful of this pose. If you need a little bit more sensation, a couple things you can do. One, you can place that left foot on top of the right knee, drawing it downward, only if that feels good on the knee and your back. And, or you can extend your right arm behind you towards the back of the room, just to get a little bit more length and space down through the right side of the body, maybe affecting the low back in a good way. Good, three more breaths. When you feel complete, come back to center. You might just keep the feet on the floor, knees bent. So your spine can realign, let the body soften. And then the other side, feet are wide on your mat, send the knees over to the right, affecting the left side. Just notice how this feels, where you are. If you need to modify the pose, please do so. Knowing how to lessen the sensation, also knowing how to deepen the sensation. Three more breaths. When you feel complete, slowly and carefully, coming out of that rotation, come back to neutral. Again, back is flat, knees are bent, feet flat on the floor. Just pause for a moment, check in with your body, listen to your body and move into any other pose or movement or stretch that would naturally feel good to you at this point. You have a couple of minutes to spare while you're taking this opportunity to continue to take care of yourself, especially after those significant back bends. So finding relief. The movements you take, the poses you take here don't necessarily have to be yoga poses. Just something that feels good. I'll share with you something that's helped me because I, I do have a sensitive low back what it helps me to help take some of that pressure off, I'll take a, I'm taking a bridge pose, but I'm not, I'm not lifting up all the way, just enough where I can actually engage my glutes, just by squeezing the glutes. And the stronger I get my glutes, it's taking some of the pressure away from my back, because sometimes my back just takes so much pressure <clears throat> that I need to teach kind of other parts of my body to support the low back. And so, Engaging and getting the glutes to get a little stronger helps me. Continuing to find those movements or poses that feel good to you whenever you feel complete. Go ahead and find your resting posture. That could be Shavasana. Might be some other pose that's restorative in nature, that feels good to you. You can fully relax your body, your breath, your mind.
need to move just yet. Just check in with your breath. Notice your breathing. That slow, steady breath in and out. Helping you to be even more relaxed, more present. Once again, return to the awareness of your breath. This time, taking five slow, deep breaths, feeling the breath move through your body, listening to the sound of your breath, even if it's quiet, beginning to feel movement return to your body. Return to your intention. You've opened your heart today. What are you receiving? What are you giving? Continuing to feel movement return to your body. And when you're ready, take your time. Carefully roll to one side of your body, pausing for a moment in this nurturing pose. Then still moving in slow motion, guide your way up to seated. Just sitting up nice and tall, nice length in the spine, relaxed shoulders. Your hands might be resting in your lap or on your knees, or you can bring hands to heart center. And wherever you are, just taking one more full and complete breath in and out. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying, Namaste. Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.